So, you're about to unbox your brand new MacBook Air. And you couldn't care less about Windows Ultrabooks. But what about the HP Spectre? The LG Gram or Huawei's MateBook? These beautiful Ultrabooks were born to destroy Apple's MacBook Air. And yet, here it is, back with a vengeance. And all of a sudden, the question asked is no longer, why should you buy a MacBook Air? Nope. Instead, I think we should ask, did Apple just kill Windows Ultrabooks? So let's start with the new MacBook Air. Same price, same design, minus a fan, and now featuring the M1 system on a chip. In typical Apple fashion, they came out swinging with claims like three times faster than any Windows laptop in its price range, or faster than 98% of PC laptops sold in the last year. The best part about these claims is that they sound really good, but they're really hard to check. Oh, Apple, you're such a rascal. The only proper comparison comes in regards to the 8-core CPU inside the SoC. Here, Apple compares the M1 featuring the 8-core GPU to the previous generation MacBook Air and its 1.2 GHz quad-core i7. Apple claims that the M1 CPU is up to 3.5 times faster, so uh, let's see if that's true. Now that the benchmarks are out, we can finally put some numbers to Apple's marketing talk. Hey, that's amazing. Okay, so <laughs> the single-core performance is not three times faster than the previous MacBook Air, but what is interesting here is that it's as fast as the single-core performance of the new Ryzen 5000 series, and that's a 105 watt CPU. But what's really crazy is that once we move to multi-core performance, we notice that it's almost 2.5 times faster than the i7. And that's not something you see every day. Now, people may argue that Geekbench is a short test, and it doesn't really stress the CPU, which in turn would favor the MacBook Air's thermal envelope. But as far as I know, the test is the same for everyone. Apparently, an Apple Silicon version of Cinebench is being compiled as we speak, and that should offer a more realistic performance comparison. Okay, breaking news. While I was editing the video, the first Cinebench R23 scores came out. And let's have a look at those, all right? So in single thread, the Apple M1 is around, I don't know, 25, 30% slower than the Ryzen 5 3600X. And when it compared to the Ryzen 7 4800HS, it's about the same. But in multi-core, we have about half the performance of the Ryzen 5 3600X and a bit more than that when it comes to the Ryzen 7 4800HS. But you have to remember that these are 35 watt chips and the Apple M1 is a 10 watt chip. So the moment Apple bumps up that power, it's gonna get pretty interesting. So yeah, there you have it. First Cinebench R23 results only on Windows report. Yes, baby. Now back to the video. What I think is actually happening here is that Apple is using optimized apps while leveraging the inherent benefits of the unified architecture of its SoC. So while you will most likely see the performance boost advertised, this will not necessarily translate into brute computing power. I think that Apple made the M1 with very specific tasks in mind. And in a way, that's really smart. The takeaway here is that now you can buy a laptop for $9.99 that can do video editing, photo editing, 3D rendering, audio work, code compiling, and even play video games in a way that no other laptop in that price range can match. And that's pretty cool. But before we get all giggly, let's remember that all these performance tests were run on the 16 gig model, which is very important because the M1 is an SoC. And as Apple puts it on their website, the M1 chip brings up to 16 gigabyte of unified memory. The single pool of high bandwidth low latency memory allows apps to share data between the CPU, GPU, and neural engine. Which basically means that what used to be your RAM and your VRAM is now one and the same. And what happens when that runs out? Well, just take a look at the test they did for 4K editing. It's a 13 second project with two 4K streams at 24 frames per second running at the same time, which is then looped for five minutes. Now, I don't wanna be mean, but something tells me that once someone will try this exact same test 
with a project that is, I don't know, 14 seconds or longer, you will start to drop frames. So why does Apple use 10 second or 13 second long projects? Because 4K is memory intensive. And in reality, the MacBook Air is meant to show you the power of the M1, but not actually let you use it professionally. I mean, they still have to release the iMac and the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Who would buy those if the MacBook Air wasn't capped of 16 gigs of RAM? So in reality, these performance gains aren't meant to take down the Pro PC market with its crazy desktop CPUs, at least not yet. No, the new MacBook Air is meant to take down Windows Ultrabooks. And truth be told, kind of beats them into submission by doing what Apple does best, changing the game. So, did Apple just kill Windows laptops? No, not really, but they're putting real pressure on Windows Ultrabooks. Well, that was it for me. Don't forget to crush that subscribe button and let me know in the comments if you're gonna pull the trigger on the new MacBook Air or if you're gonna wait. I for one am considering the Mac Mini, but I'm not so convinced yet. Anyway, stay tuned to windowsreport.com for that error-free tech life and I guess I'll see you in the comments.